Okay, had some uh, issues with the K4, and I'll get to that in a minute, but before we do that, I wanted to show some of the latest products from Mercer. They're just super awesome products. Of course, you know about the, uh, the switch, if you haven't seen it. There's the switch. It's the original one. Actually, the second one, the original one's on the K4. And then this is uh, the brake wheel. Of course, it turns with the ratchet and all that. That's the Pensy style brake wheel. I got two of them. And then, of course, the backup light. You've all seen that already. And now the latest thing is the junction box, which, hold it up here. And uh, opens up. Which is, put the wires in there and it just screws there. And of course it has an inlet and outlet. You can also the top, if you notice the top of it here is a little thicker. And the reason why we made it that way is so you can randomly put and tap, drill and tap into this to um, set your, to put your, uh, your uh, count, uh, conduit into, thread it and whatever. Of course it's got the little wing nut on it. Hold it tight and two little mounting lugs there and uh, implement outlet like I said before pile national in the middle and uh, that's a companion to my to my uh, light and I'm selling that those for $55 postage paid to anywhere in the USA okay well got the commercial out of the way <laughs> and uh, gonna show you something here that happened at the club picnic a couple of weeks ago Dan uh, yells over to me, Dad, Dad, something happened. And he called it a side rod. Uh, and I said, side rod broke? Oh, my God. So what it turned out to be was the combination lever. And um, snapped right off. And here it is. Here's the original. Pew, snapped. And the reason being that it snapped, why it snapped, was... Well, first of all, these are manganese bronze castings, lost wax, that we made years ago. And Paul Culp, who did all the mold work, uh, against my better judgment, decided to make it um, uh, to scale the thicknesses of the cross sections, and that's not the best thing to do. Uh, he used to say the square root of the uh, angle of the dangle is even to the manassas of the beast and the moose and the masses and all this nonsense, which is total nonsense. So I had really no choice in the matter, and he had to, he did it. And what had happened was this rod right here, which is actually is bent, look at that, bent on me from the pressure. The... Uh, this rod right here is so thin. Look how thin that is. The little cross section should have been twice that thickness. What happened was when the engine was going down the railroad, this right here, this bearing wore out to the point where this was going sideways like this. It's going sideways. And as it pushed forward, this went over far enough to grab a bolt that was on the crosshead guide that bolts the two crosshead guides together. And it just hit that and just snapped it right in half. Well, I brought it back to the shop, and I decided to uh, try to silver solder it together and put a patch on the back, which I did. I figured, well, for now, get, get by. There's a little patch on the back there. You can see the right here is a patch. And uh, silver soldered it, but this, this is supposed to be manganese, but I'm not sure if it really is, because I didn't make it. The guy who made these a long time ago said there was manganese bronze. It may not have been, because it, it should have soldered with no problem, but it didn't. 
And I thought I had it all done pretty good, but it really wasn't. So just tore and original crack. So uh, decided to make one out of steel. And yesterday I drew a drawing. This is, by the way, the original. This is the original drawings for the for the uh, valve gear. And I decided. This is another drawing here. I decided to make my own drawing, which I did do. There it is here. And it's all dimensioned out. And this is showing the back side of the, right here. This is the back side of the, of the uh, link. And this is the front side. Okay, now, the idea behind it is, well, I'm going to start with this block of steel here. And I've already pre-milled, uh, sized it up. And how I'm going to do it, I've got extensions on either end so I can hold it. If you look back at the drawing again, you'll see the, the uh, dotted lines there. I don't know if they're visible. Dotted lines right up in here, there, and at the bottom are, are just extra stock that I'm going to use to hold it. It's on this side, actually. You see the dotted lines there. That's to use to hold the, the rod. And uh, while, you're, while you're milling it, because there's a, the angles and everything. So while it's flat like this, while it's block like this, I'm going to uh, drill and ream the three holes for the, the, the for the combination lever, the one where the radius rod goes, the crosshead guide, and then the union link goes down here. So I'm going to just drill and ream those holes three sixteenths, all three of them, and then work from there, because that's the most important thing that they be where they need to be. And then the rest of it is just shaping. So we're going to shape it out. I'll probably saw cut part of it away and get, get some of the meat of the material off there and then just mill it and chop away. And like, um, I forget who it was, I think Leonardo da Vinci or Michelangelo said, well, in, in here somewhere there's a, somehow inside this piece of steel, there's a, a combination lever for a K4. So. Then, after I get it all made, I'm going to plate it with electroless nickel. I've got the stuff over there. I just ordered some more chemicals. I, I was deplete, depleted the chemicals, and that's got to be the second phase of this after I get it all machined out and everything. I'm not going to show you how I machine it. I mean, uh, runs a lathe, runs a mill. That's it. You know, just, just run them and get them done. But um, uh, I just wanted to talk about it and tell you what I, what I plan to do. And uh, the main thing, the main uh, purpose of this video is to show how to do the uh, plating, because I always wanted to show that. Now, when I first did the K4 years ago, um, the, the, all the rods are bronze or brass. They're actually bronze, all bronze. And uh, I plated them. I, I uh, blast, uh, blast bead blast them and then plated them. And I used the electroless nickel process that I got from Caswell, C-A-S-W-E-L-L. -L. They're uh, Caswell Industries in New York someplace. Um, Lions, New York. It's up, upstate by the Finger Lakes Live Steamers, actually. And um, they sell all the chemicals. They sell a bunch of stuff. They sell powder coating equipment and everything else. They sell uh, a lot of plating stuff. So I was going to uh, electroplate it with actual current. Uh, later on, I was like, well, I'll get this stuff later on and do it, because it's a lot more of a process. you got to have baths and booths and baths and music about. So I decided to try the electroless, and believe it or not, it's lasted all these years, and it looks beautiful. The actual rods, to me, look like they were steel. No one really knows that they're brass plated, bronze plated. And uh, this one will be steel, of course, and this will plate. When you do the, uh, I'll, I'll go over the process, but when you do the, any bronze, you got to, touch it off with a, a ferrous piece of something, steel or whatever, to get the process started. Once it gets started, it'll keep processing. It works off of heat and these chemicals. And it's really easy to do. I, I had no problem with it. The biggest problem I had was doing the big, long pieces, like doing the um, doing the um, main rods that were long. And the other real, real important thing about it is it has to be squeaky clean. Squeaky clean. You got to wash them with water, soap and water, and everything. Clean, get them real clean, and then uh, they'll plate with no problem. It'll stay on there for a long time, and it doesn't even wear out. It's 
pretty nice. I figured out, uh, you know, polishing the rods and all will wear out, but it don't. So um, that's what I'm going to be working on the next couple of days. i got to try to get this done for the weekend. I want to get it on the engine. Biggest problem with putting it back on the engine is now I've lost some of the timing, so hopefully I get the inspection ports open and reset the timing, and uh, it will be as good as it was before because it was pretty, pretty good before. So I've still got some of my timing marks. And uh, I got to refresh my memory on what to do on that, but uh, some of my notes someplace I'll find them. But uh, I'm going to be working on this the next couple of days, and when I get the rod all completed, uh, we're going to do the plating, and I'll, I'll have a video on that. So um, look forward to, to seeing the video on the plating. Now one other thing I want to talk about is I'm going to do a video real soon on the 040. I'm pretty much ready to release the castings in the pattern, uh, the parts. To, to start, I've got enough parts or patterns made, as you certainly know, I did the pattern for the cylinders a while ago. The drivers are at the, at the foundry now being cast. Uh, the next will be the, uh, the cylinders, and next will be the, all the parts for the uh, steam chest and so on, covers and whatnot. And um, uh, I'm going to be um, uh, allow, I'm going to bring that out in a couple of a couple of weeks and, and, and put all the parts out and talk talk about what what to expect out of that. I've got eight sets up for sale, so uh, I got to come up with a way of uh, of uh, getting. I want I want to be able to sell them in sets. Now that, I, I'm not going to sell parts because in today's market you just can't do that. Like in the back of the day. You could sell a set of cylinders or sell this and that. Maybe down the road I might do that, but for right now, the initial um, uh, marketing, the initial marketing of it will be a, a total kit, the, the total parts. So now, it's not going to break your pocketbook. It's going to be very reasonable. And then, like I mentioned before, I'm going to have some videos on how I set up some of the parts and things like that. And then the remainder of, well, how to lay it out and what, how to turn on the lathe, how to thread on the lathe, all that's going to be the Mr. Tubalcane. Um, I'm going to refer to his particular videos or any of his videos regarding some of the machine work, the, the gen general machine shop practices. And uh, mine will be particular machine shop practices for live steam. So between the two of them, you'll be able to get um, an idea how to build this and what machinery you're going to need. We'll talk about that too. So, um, I'm going to go ahead, get on the mill, and start hacking away at this thing, and uh, uh, we'll be back when uh, I'm ready to plate it.